What's up, everybody? We've got a stack of mail here today, and the goal with this stack of mail is we're going to talk about what I bought, the reason that I bought it, uh, the thought process behind it, and uh, we're going to go through the mistakes. We're going to go through the stuff that looks good for the future. The video starts, Ryan Schwab. Highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I am Bruce Banner and welcome to another episode of Jake and Jeweler Magic. Today we are going to be talking about a bunch of mail that I've bought, been accumulating over the last month or so. Uh, recent sets. There are a ton of Magic the Gathering sets. Just an epic crap load of them they come out constantly we have infinity around the corner we have everybody fomoing out over the warhammer decks that are coming out you got a bunch of people that are like oh why didn't i buy the foil warhammer decks at 125 a piece now they're 300 we're gonna see if all that fomo pans out no warhammer here to talk about today but that's what's going on in mtg that's what's on people's mind warhammer decks infinity around the corner Brothers War, coming off the heels of Dominaria United, which ended up being a big old pile of absolute dog poo. And you can roast me in the comments. You can let me know. Jake, you're so silly for thinking Dominaria sucks. Well, I, I think sealed collector boosters in the long term, because they have Legends possibility, I think they're kind of risky, but I also can see that sealed product going up from where it is, like around 212s. We've got a bunch of mail to talk about today. Got a bunch of double masters just came out. There's some double masters in here. We've got some foils from that set. We've got some borderless cards. Uh, we could talk about these right now. If you do enjoy these videos, I implore you click like and subscribe. That's a great way to support the channel. We also have Patreon. If you want to get involved on a deeper level, you can head on over there. We have a commander league over spell table. We have uh, giveaways. We have foil quests and all sorts of different stuff. We have a, a very active discord with lots of members. Let's get into this really quick. We have some stuff to talk about today. I've said a bunch of stuff. You know that you can go support the channel. There's a TCG affiliate link. If you're buying singles, that helps out the channel, all that stuff. I've said all the things. Uh, what we have here is a group of textured foils, 15 of them, some uncommon, some rare. And I'm going to put visual aids up so you can kind of see these collections and where they're at. I paid $17 for these in early September, I believe September 5th. And as of right now, these cards, they've gone down in price. These are textured foils. These appear one per collector booster. Just kind of speaks to how many collector boosters get opened. This is kind of like one of the mistakes I was talking about in the beginning of the video. Now, granted, $17 isn't a huge amount of money to risk, right? If you're spending $17 multiple times across multiple cards, then yeah, it is. But 17 bucks for all of these 15 cards. And what we've learned is that the value of textured foils is dead. Nobody cares. Uh, textured foils originated in Double Masters 2022. Uh, they were the chase card in the collector product, the premium thing to chase after, but now they are in every single pack. And since I bought these at $17, they've dropped to around $8.61 all in. Plus the amount of time it would take for me to individually sell these, the, the stamp, the plain white envelope for each. This is just a loss. It's a loss on $17. Who cares? I've lost about, you know, nine bucks. It's fine. This is kind of like an experiment. Uh, you have a lot of people cracking Dominaria United collector boosters. And so you get these textured foils that start to appear in big lots on eBay. So I was like, you know what? I'll take a chance. It was a lot that was 12 bucks, three bucks for shipping, a couple dollars in tax. What we've learned from this and what I hope you can learn from this is that just because something is cool because it was printed in a previous set, you know, like extended art were printed originally in Ultimate Masters, but then extended art went in vogue in Throne of Eldraine and now extended art cards appear everywhere. Those were originally called box toppers. We have textured foils that originated in Double Masters that now nobody cares about. We have etched foils that originated in Commander Legends 1. Nobody cares about them. Every new variant, it's all going to happen to. This is It's going to be the same thing all the time. Don't make these kind of mistakes. These are kind of cool, though. I really do like the treatment on these. I think that these cards are absolutely beautiful. I do like the textured. It's very subtle and they look really nice. And so for me, I just wanted to have some of these textured cards and not buy a ton of collector boosters doing it. 
let's get into more of this stuff. Oh, I already opened this up top here. All right, Grand Arbiter, Foil. I don't have this commander, and I'm not saying go out and buy all of these. I spent five bucks on this. Five dollars for Grand Arbiter, Foil Extended. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pay the five bucks for it. Whatever. It's in the collection now. Seems good. Now we have this, $1.75. Okay, now, all right, now this is kind of funny. Faithbound Judge Foil, and there's a couple more of these in this video. We got a lot of Defender support in Dominaria United. And if Defender ever becomes a big thing, I think Faithbound Judge could be a card. I saw this card, uh, this was originally printed, you know, in Crimson Vow. Didn't really make it on my radar at all, but this has absolutely bottomed out. I paid $1.75 for this foil. I think I got myself a play set of these, and it's because I love what this card does on the back. I, I love the Sinner's Judgment, but I love what happens with this card just passively sitting on the field. It's an amazing blocker, and then after a few turns, it becomes an awesome, awesome attacker, and it's a great win condition in a Defender's Matters type deck. One thing you should know about me, I'm very much a Johnny player, okay? So, like, I like winning in weird ways. That's, like, one of my favorite things to do. Okay, now here's some borderless cards. Now, this was just a bulk borderless lot. We can uh, we can probably go over and take a look at the total spent. We could take a look at the total spent here. I was originally tracking the Mythic borderless, like, just, like, top 15 Mythic borderless cards. And they've dropped more than 50% since the set came out. This list was originally around $1,200 pre-sale. And now it's down to $665. Not this list that we're about to go through, but just a list of all of the top mythic border lists. Imperial Seal, Cavern of Souls, Renin 6, Mana Vault, Dockside, Ulamog, Kozlik, Mana Drain, Allosaurus, Crucible, Seasoned, Pyromancer, Concordant Crossroads, Consecrated Sphinx, Liliana. They've all just like tanked massively. Imperial Seal, borderless treatment, like the special alternate art that everybody was like, it won't go lower than 250 trust me. It's $97, okay? So it doesn't matter. Scarcity, if a card is not on the re uh, reserve list, once it's reprinted, the price just goes away. That's just how it is. All right, borderless eBay lot. I paid $20.42 for this lot that we're about to go through. And these cards are already worth $30.65. Now, again, you would have to go through the time that it takes to uh, resell these. These are all non-foils, but these are just going into the collection. There are a lot of good cards here, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pick up a bunch of these bulk borderless. Again, $20 for all of the cards that you see here in these uh, in these two wide sleeves. You got the Mentor, Eternal Witness, Inquisition, Lightning Bolt, just like all of the uh all of the bounce lands so this entire lot right here 20 bucks and it's already worth 30 and you can see on the screen i have the card prices there so you can look this is just essentially a collection booster like i was talking about when sets like this come out you have people that are chasing the textured foils they're chasing the big hits the smothering tithe the etched imperial seal and all of this stuff this goes back on the market and the reason it does is because people are trying to recoup so i'm out there like i'm gonna spend 20 bucks on this i'm just gonna pick up a bunch of this borderless stuff i know that you might be in the comments like but that borderless stuff it was printed like crazy yeah it was it absolutely was but I'm telling you, we're going to keep track of these lists. You can see these lists. They live in my phone. I'm going to be able to look at them a year down the line and see whether or not I made a big mistake. I don't think that Wizards of the Coast is going to bring back these custom treatments for cards in the future. Like, they are going to live and die in, border, in, in Double Masters 2022. That's where these variants live. I think it's in poor taste to just recycle old variants from old sets. Let's just... Let's just say that we're going to get past that. Okay. Little older, older card here. Dothy embrace. Now it's funny about this card. I love this card. Uh, I picked up four of these for 16 bucks. Now this is an old card that goes back to Tempest, not reserve list, but it's just strong. These are all near mint copies. Yeah. Or maybe lightly played. It's essentially just giving a creature unblockable on an enchantment. One black, two other enchantment target creature gains shadow until end of turn. That means that that creature can be blocked only by other creatures with shadow. 
in Commander, not a lot of creatures have shadow. So if you give something shadow, it essentially has unblockable. Uh, there's a lot of other ways to give creatures unblockable, but a renewable way for only two black on an enchantment. This is a card I just wanted a few copies for in the collection. It kind of popped up while I was organizing a bunch of bulk Tempests that I bought way back in like 2017. And a few of these popped up and I was like, you know what? I want a couple more copies of that card. That card seems good. So a little bit of a spec there. All right, next up, we have two copies of Reckoner Bankbuster. This is the Soft Glow. I just love this card. I think it does a lot. When it enters the battlefield, it enters with three charge counters on it. Costs two. And for two and tap, remove a charge counter from Reckoner Bankbuster, draw a card. Then if there are no charge counters in Reckoner Bankbuster, create a treasure token and a 1-1 one, one colorless pilot creature token with this creature cruise vehicles as though its power were too greater. That doesn't mean that its power is too greater. It just means that it cruises as though its power were too greater, meaning that one of the 1-1s one it makes is enough to crew this by itself. That's not even why I like this card. I like it because it's a draw engine. I like that it creates tokens. Uh, I just think this card has a lot going on, and being an artifact, it's difficult to deal with. You know, typically you need specific cards that deal with artifacts, whereas a board wipe is just a catch-all to kill creatures. Artifacts and enchantments are more difficult to deal with. All right, what do we got next? Uh, Kolagon's Command. This is just a really good card. Uh, picked it up because it was $3, which is just remarkably low. Uh, I think this was about a month ago, so Double Masters has kind of hit a low low. Not saying it's not going to go lower. Nothing on this channel is financial advice. Double Masters 2022 could go lower, but it's low enough for me to where it's low risk. Kolagon's Command is a great modal spell, came to us in Dragons of Tarkir. I was high on the card back then, and so I'm picking up copies now while they're cheap. You have a big Pioneer shakeup, especially with Liliana, and that format is going to change. So we know that this card is already good in Modern, so I imagine this card does find a home in Pioneer. It's already played in Pioneer, but in a bigger way in the future. Okay, so next we have a bulk foil lot of more Double Masters, all right? And these are all foil rares. I think there might be a Mythic in here. There are so many good hits in Double Masters 2022. You have, like I said, just lots and lots and lots of good cards that go on the market for dirt cheap. So you have so many people that are chasing all of, all of the big hits, all the textured foils. Restoration Angel is a great card. You have Obnixilis, great card. This was an expensive foil before the reprint. Pithing Needle, uh, just a whole bunch of stuff. The Leeches are actually good. Xur the Enchanter. There's like some really good stuff in here. And for the low price, and I do believe there are a couple Mythics. Yeah, Azuri and Carador that made it in here. All of these are foil. This entire lot has pretty much stayed the same. And I bought this about uh, in July of 2022. So this lot here of 25 cards total, all foil rares and a couple mythics. Uh, I bought this at $20.42, I believe. And now it's currently worth $20.06 or $21.06. So not a lot of movement here. A really good way to boost a collection. If you didn't have a lot of these cards when Double Masters came out, Double Masters 2022, and you waited a little while, then you found a really good time to buy. Just saying, really nice way to boost a collection with just Double Masters bulk when something like that comes out. Uh, yes, okay. So like I said, there would be more of these. These are four foil Faithbound Judges. This is just a card that I really want to play. I'm not saying go out and buy all of these. I'm not saying go out and just buy all this stuff. This is a card, super low risk. It's only a dollar right now. It, it isn't played in anything either. And so I think I paid like $1.50 each for these, these Faithbound Judges. We'll put that with the other one up here. So five of those total in the video, and we have just or one more thing here. Oh, okay. And then, yeah, Swift Spears. This is just a really good playable card. Modern playable, Pioneer playable, uh, Pauper playable. Really strong card. Picked up a foil play set for like three bucks. Really good time to pick those up. That used to be a foil that was very expensive. So if you want to play a foil like that, you know, now's the time to buy. Not financial advice, but Double Masters 2022 sent a lot of cards down to the bottom. These are all going to go into binders. We're going to put these away. Some of these are going to get built into decks. Uh, some of these are going to sit. We're going to learn from them. And we're going to learn that textured foils, it doesn't matter. And we're also going to learn that when stuff gets reprinted, you know, big cards like Restoration Angel, big cards like Obnixilis, they go to the bottom. 
So if you're ever holding one of these cards and for some reason it goes to 10 bucks and you're not using it, it's a good time to trade it away towards something else that you're looking for, especially when you know that a card like this that was like $15 for the foil is going to race to the bottom. You could buy it again. You could buy your foil back. If you don't care about that symbol there, you could have sold the one from the core set and you could have bought this one for a dollar and then put the other money from the old foil before the set came out. So just never really diamond hands. I know that people say that a lot, but don't really diamond hand something when it's like ripping to the moon. Just like get rid of it, rebuy it later, especially if it's not reserve list. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you want to get involved with the channel on a deeper level, please head on over to Patreon. That's a great way to do it. I'm going to get out of here for today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of what I'm buying and look out for future episodes. Let me know what you're interested in. Are you buying the Warhammer decks? Are you uh, going to be getting into Infinity? Not super into Infinity. I really like the Shocklands and I've watched a couple of the initial collector openings and I'm just not seeing it. So um, I think my focus is going to be on Brothers War. I didn't FOMO out. This is pretty much all I bought from Dominaria United right here. There's going to be a couple other things that I pick up from the set that I really like, but um, I hope none of you got caught chasing those Legends hits because that has proven to be a, uh, I don't know, I guess we could call that a bull trap. Talk to all of you later in the future. My name is Jake, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode of What I'm Buying. Goodbye.